Iraq, like Egypt and other countries undergoing dramatic change in the Middle East, faces immense challenges in the years ahead. We met an Iraqi American who has spent much of her life in war zones, who firmly believes the key to lasting peace is in the hands of women. I grew up in war, um, and I grew up in not only a war, but it we Iraq was led by Saddam Hussein, so it was uh, fear and terror. Zainab Salvi's father was Saddam Hussein's personal pilot. Her family's every move controlled by his iron hand. The fear, I, I wish I can explain that fear. It was like a poison gas leaked into our home and we all breathed it slowly. Well, I was uh, about 10 years old when uh, the Iran-Iraq war started. And at a very young age I learned but there is this other side of war that sort of no one talks about. And that is what women go through and what women live in war. And it was the women who run the schools. It was the women who run the factories. And it is women who keep life going in the midst of war. And, and you're saying it's a story that's not told. It is speaking. not told and we are impacted by that when it comes to peace. Peace means far more than just ending of fighting. It means how do we stabilize life again? How do we get life to normal again? Let's talk about an example, Afghanistan. The more we kill, the more their sons are angry. The more we recruit new level and new armies of Taliban. And the way to win this war from a women's perspective is get jobs, fix the roads, get electricity, more schools. Fresh out of college and deeply affected by the use of rape as a weapon of war in Bosnia, Salbi founded Women for Women International in 1993, training women survivors of war how to earn a living and how to fight for their rights in their communities. I couldn't do anything about injustice when I was in Iraq, but today I can. This is nothing but my truth, living this work and serving women around the world. They bring me joy. Salbi says if women are left out of Egypt's fledgling democracy and denied seats at Afghanistan's peace talks, Neither democracy nor peace will survive. So let's talk about some facts and figures. 80% of the refugees in the world are women and children. 90% of modern war casualties are civilians, 75% of which are women and children. This is according to the UN. And you have women being targeted in major ways in rape and violence. We can talk about serious, lasting, sustainable peace if we do not include women in it. We're about to enter a new year, 2012. As we do, are you optimistic or are you discouraged that things are getting better, that more women will be part of the peace process? I work in war zones, uh, you know, for, for 18 years, and I wouldn't be able to do that if I'm not an optimist. The fact that the Nobel Peace Prize this year goes to three women, and they each had different angles. The Yemeni woman set up a tent on her own. That's how the revolution in Yemen started and inspired many men and women as a result to overthrow the government. The, the Liberian activist basically went to the Muslim and Christian communities, women, said our boys are fighting, but let us talk. And as a result, they pushed the men to have a serious peace agreement. And then you have President Sirleaf of Liberia. As a result, she becomes mm. the president. Mm. They make me believe, and I continue to believe, and that we will. We are moving in a positive direction for more women to be included. According to the United Nations, women have signed fewer than 3% of the world's peace agreements.